Here we're looking at a shoulder joint model. This is a clavicle. The scapula is going to be underneath here, and then the humerus would be right here. Okay. So let's look at some of the structures right here. This right here would be the long head of the biceps passing through the bicipital groove up here, which is a structure located between the greater tubercle and lesser tubercle. This muscle right here is the subscapularis muscle. Subscapularis muscle right here you can see is going to attach to the lesser tubercle of the humerus, which is on the anterior aspect of the humerus. This muscle right here, this is teres major. We would be able to see teres minor on the posterior. Okay. Some of the other structures we can see from this vantage point would be we can see the supraspinatus muscle here passing under the coracoacromial arch and attaching to the top part of the greater tubercle of the humerus. Okay. Now, this ligament right here, this is going to be the coracoacromial ligament, which would help to form the arch with the acromion process. Okay. This ligament right here, this ligament is the coracoclavicular ligament, specifically the trapezoid ligament. Under here we also have another coracoclavicular ligament. This would be the conoid ligament. If we look from the top view here, we can see a nice view of the acromioclavicular ligament. Okay. In this ligament would be the acromioclavicular joint, or the AC joint. When someone experiences a shoulder separation, what's going to happen is this joint is going to separate. A first degree separation, the acromioclavicular ligament would get torn. On a second degree separation, the AC ligament and the trapezoid ligament would get torn. And on a third degree separation, the AC ligament, trapezoid ligament, and conoid ligament would get torn. Okay? But those ligaments hold the clavicle down. When they get torn, the clavicle is going to come up and you'd be able to see that deformity on someone who has a separated shoulder. On the posterior aspect of this model, we could see the supraspinatus here, we could see the infraspinatus here, and teres minor located right here. Supraspinatus, infraspinatus, and teres minor would all attach to the greater tubercle of the humerus. Okay? S-I-T. The subscapularis on the other side would be the S, so these are commonly called sits muscles. Right? These four muscles would be the rotator cuff muscles. Again, the rotator cuff muscles would be supraspinatus, infraspinatus, teres minor, and subscapularis. This muscle right here would be teres major, the little helper of the lats. It's called the little helper of the lats because its insertion is the same as latissimus dorsi, and also it performs the same action as latissimus dorsi which is extension, adduction, and medial rotation of the arm at the shoulder. Okay? Latissimus dorsi does that as well, but latissimus dorsi also will anteriorly tilt the pelvis because it's anchored down there. This muscle, however, will not because it doesn't attach to the pelvis. It attaches to the scapula. If you found this video helpful, click like and consider subscribing to my channel. Don't forget to visit www.humanbodyhelp.com.